All right, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, please bear with us this morning. We've never done anything like this before, so we're pretty new at it. And uh, we're also not usually up this early, so we're a little sleepy, but uh, we're good to go. Um, so our talk, we're gonna do like a brief history. Uh, Barry's give us a little bit of an intro, but just so you know kind of where we came from and uh, how we ended up here today where we are. Uh, then we're gonna have three kind of main uh, sections. We get asked uh, in email by students a lot of questions all the time just about certain aspects of our business. So we're gonna cover kind of like how we work together, uh, working for clients and then also working for ourselves which is kind of like, I guess three, we'll co hopefully cover, I don't know, basically a lot of the questions we get asked in interviews and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to give just a little brief history of um, how Devil Knock got started and our background in art and design. Uh, we were always kind of uh, artistic growing up. We, I did a lot of painting in high school, Andrew did a lot of photography. Um, after that we kind of thought graphic design was maybe a good uh, career to get into since it allowed us to be uh, creative and make money. So um, we, uh, I always stayed in Ottawa, we're from Ottawa, sorry, I should have said. I went to Algonquin College there and um, did the graphic design course. Andrew moved to Toronto here and to, uh, went to Humber College in Etobicoke. And uh, for the same thing, it was advertising and graphic design? Yeah, advertising and graphic design. Uh, I liked that program, well, one, because it's the only one I got into. And I applied kind of last minute, so that was a, you know, definitely helped my opinion of them, but also because it was nice, quick to your program, so I was in and out. Uh, least amount of time, which was good for me, being super lazy. And uh, my program was, th was three years. After that, we both had jobs at, uh, Andrew worked at a studio here, and I worked at an ad agency in Toronto, uh, or sorry, in Ottawa. But um, after that job fell through, I decided to move down to Toronto. I had friends here, and Andrew was here, so we thought we could just do our own company. We weren't really uh, happy with like our jobs currently, so we were thought it'd be good to yeah, do your own thing. They were fine. It was just, I think the main reason we started doing, wanting to do Double Knot was just because uh, we wanted to do better work and not that the work we were doing was bad, but it just wasn't what interested us. You know, we didn't want to brag about it to our friends. We didn't want to necessarily put it in our portfolio or stuff like that. It was exciting stuff like, you know, websites for summer camps and I don't know, that's what I was working on anyway. So, uh, Matt moved down and we had a third friend who was our partner when we first started, so he did web stuff. So between the three of us, we you know, got uh, a studio really quickly, which looking back was really weird because for a large part of our existence, we, um, we didn't have any studio like that. We were like work from home. Um, but yeah, I think we just wanted to start the business because uh, you know, when any young people want to start your own company, we want to like have uh, do good work and show it off, do the kind of work you want to do, and just, you know, have a cool office too. Uh, but it's funny because, you know, saying that we started it to do our own business or wanted to do, the, you know, cool work we wanted to do because as anyone here who's done that, you know, you probably end up doing more dog shit work, you know, for just to pay the bills when you first start up than if you actually worked at a proper design agency, so. But uh, yeah, Matt's, tell us better. Uh, yeah, so there's basically three different uh, eras, basically, of Double Knot. Our first one was in uh, this studio at uh, 141 Spadina. Uh, like Andrew said, we thought that we had to spend a lot of money and have a cool studio and uh, when we had no clients, basically. Uh, so we had a third partner, Greg, who was our web programmer. We did mostly websites, was so basically how we paid the bills. Um, and we wanted to just work for the music industry. Like, there was other companies doing it at the time. We thought we could... Um, just work for bands, do concert posters, merch, album artwork, and that we'd you know, be okay just doing that kind of stuff. Um, these are some of our early gig posters. The Modest Mouse one is our first uh, screen print that we ever did. And uh, <coughs> some of our early uh, album artwork that we did for some Toronto bands. Um, so yeah, we did all right doing just that stuff. Um, 
And we also started working for the Polaris Music Prize, which is definitely one of our biggest clients and longest running. We've been doing it for six years now. Uh, we're on our sixth year, so uh, that's still going. And it was a good, you know, it made us money and kind of got us more into the Toronto music scene and Canadian music scene. Um, yep. And then after that, we, Greg, our third partner, left. He um, kind of just wanted to do his own thing, was sick of doing websites, ma basically making us all the money when, you know, we weren't doing anything really. Or we were doing the fun stuff, he was doing the kind of hard stuff, so. Uh, he left, we decided to focus primarily on print design. Um, so we kind of knew we'd be making less money, so we had to, we both lived together at the time, so we thought hey, it just makes sense to get a home studio going. Um, these are some photos of our, our space. Our, basically our living room doubled as our office. Uh, and this time we just, we realized that we weren't gonna be able to just work for bands and uh, you know make a living. So we kind of started to diversify our portfolio and. Uh, look for clients outside the music industry. Uh, and this time we started doing uh, book covers for Penguin Canada. Uh, it was a good job. It was, uh, we still do them to this day and it was nice. It's kind of, they're kind of like posters in a way, you know, they have to be attractive and eye appealing, jump off the shelf, uh, attract attention. So it was a good uh, crossover for us. We also started doing uh, illustration for uh, different magazines. Uh, the one on the left was for the, the Walrus, and the one on the right was for Wired UK. Um, so yeah, we started doing more stuff like this. It was also a good transition. You know, we got to use our style and uh, you know just adopt it to like a different um, client base, basically. Uh, and so that brings us today. We are finally got out of our apartment and have a proper studio. At the start of the year, I started a new business uh, with a longtime friend of mine, like. Uh, it's a motorcycle gear store and it's on Ossington. And so when we were looking for a space for that, we thought it'd be great to have a location that I could do, uh, me and Matt could do double knot out of in the same place. So kind of keep my eyes on both uh, projects. So we're upstairs from that. Uh, it's nice to have a proper office again. And uh, we lost two employees, our cats, Milo and Nilis, but uh, we gained uh, an intern this summer, Ross. So it's the first time we've kind of had another person in double knot other than uh, ourselves since Greg left uh, and it's been nice to have him help us out with Polaris this summer. Uh, so we're in a pretty good spot. We have like pretty nice diverse client list. We're able to turn down a lot of work we don't want to do and do kind of pick and choose the work we want to do which is it's been kind of steadily building that way for the last couple of years but before that there was a lot of lean slow times so we were happy to take any work we could get and you know when you're doing that it kind of like forces you to do work that you would maybe not do. Uh, so we're pretty happy where we are right now. Um, we're happy the small size we are. We kind of like being able to do all the work that comes in because if we had other junior designers uh, and they were, you know, we were having to feed them jobs, it just kind of means we wouldn't get to do it, which is, you know, that's why we're doing it in the first place because we like designing. Um, and if we ever got out of it, and got into the more administrative stuff, like full time, it just, you know, that's not why we started the business. So we'd kind of be missing out on the fun part. Uh, so I guess we'll get into the first uh, kind of broad s section, uh, working together, since people always seem to want to know, like we're brothers. Obviously not a lot of people get to work with their brother, especially in such a creative sense. So people always want to know, oh, what's it like working with your brother? So, um, <laughs> before Double Knot, we didn't do too much, uh, we didn't work that, together that much. Uh, being twins in high school and elementary school, they always separated us. Like we didn't have any classes together. So it wasn't until we started Double Knot that we basically, you know, realized that we can work together and be around each other for long periods of time without, you know, driving each other nuts. Um, yeah, so we have kind of two like different approaches to design. Uh, and I think they complement each other very well uh, in the sense that Matt is very uh, conceptual and detail oriented and total perfectionist to the point where it sometimes drives me nuts in a way because I am almost the opposite where I, uh, I don't know, I get an idea quickly and I kind of like to just run with it. Um, and I also, I guess, I don't know if it's because I do the books for Double Knot, but it's like I always kind of look at the bottom dollar or the bottom line where it's just like if we're spending more time on a job, especially on one that we're not really getting paid much for, which is sometimes a lot of the work we do, at least initially. 
uh, it's kind of hard to justify spending you know upwards of two weeks to a month on something that we're kind of doing for fun. But I mean, it is fun and it works out. So uh, Matt kind of pushes me to work, I guess maybe, I don't want to say care more because I do care, but like maybe spend a little bit more time on th certain things. Or like sometimes I'll be like, you know, this idea is perfect, two thumbnails, this is the one, I'm gonna go with it, and you're like, yeah. I say, no, that idea is no good. <laughs> you gotta keep thinking. You gotta spend more than half an hour on your comps, basically. I don't know, I just, yeah, it's, I find we're a good balance that way. You know, I spend too much time on stuff, he doesn't spend enough time, so between us, we kind of get a good balance going, basically. Yeah. I push him creatively and he pushes me to just, you know. I have like an anti pep talk, like faster. where he's been working on the same poster for a month and it's changed like incrementally, like. Never that long. That's nice. <laughs> Three weeks. One week. And I just like. <laughs> no. But, anyways, yeah. So, like, be like, you, you can't hit them all out of the park. You gotta, like, you know, even like our favorite designers that we look up to have work that I just look at and be like, eh. Miss the boat on that one. But anyways, like we're a good team that way. Uh, we push each other. Um, yeah. And then... Um, and also just like with all designers, you know, it's nice to have a different, like a set of eyes, like a second person giving your opinion on, uh, you know, your artwork. You might get stuck on something or you might think something's good when it's not really working and just like a fresh set of eyes or another opinion, you know, helps out with that. Uh, so we're going to go through like some samples of work we've done and kind of just show like how, I don't know, I guess how we work on those kind of jobs, but also how we kind of do them together. Um, so this is a book cover that we did, uh, or I should say this is three comps for a book cover we did. Typically when we're doing book cover comps, um, we present kind of like three ideas and it's good in a way because usually Penguin or Viking or whoever we're dealing with is really cool about like just picking one and not like, you know, you're usually happy with one of them. So, and it's fun because it's, yeah, it's like a poster and you can kind of just like come up with kind of, you know, whatever, three cool ideas, do, you know, do them and then kind of refine them once they pick one. So these are kind of three different ones we did uh, for the book, Once You Break a Knuckle that came out, I think it was last year or something like that. Um, and usually when we're working on stuff, we'll like, brainstorm together, uh, so we'll kind of like pool our ideas, come up with as many you know, random good ideas as we can, and then just kind of like pick and choose the best ones and execute them, and sometimes I'll execute Matt's ideas, sometimes he'll do mine, uh, just it kind of like whatever we just kind of start with and do it, that's just how we go uh, on a job like that. Um, so. This is just a finished product of uh that project, we got to use the mountains from one of the other book covers in the inside jacket, so that was nice. Um, next, uh, gig posters. Uh, we used to do a lot, uh, we basically do our posters together. We felt that if we worked uh, you know, side by side and both like put our best you know, efforts forward that it would be a better product, product in the end. Um, Andrew's strengths are really a typography. Um, he was always, you know, he's really good at type and colors. Um, I'm more like we talked about, I'm more creative, more into the illustration side. So with these two particular posters, um, I think basically they were, yeah, both my ideas. And, um, you know, I kind of worked on the illustrations where Andrew did the type and picked the colors, and maybe did like the arrangement of the info. Um, but yeah, so we basically would just like pass files back and forth through our computers and just, you know, work on it until it was done. Uh, this is, um, yeah, just one of our art prints that we do, uh, and it was uh, my idea, and I started doing it, so I basically had the layout of the bottles, and then, uh, and the colors and stuff like that, and then Matt uh, helped me come up with all the cool icons for the, uh, that were actually like on the labels and stuff like that, so, I don't know, just kind of like, a lot of projects we, especially these days, we kind of like, uh, we'll take on and just kind of like run with, we'll help each other like with, with thinking up ideas or we'll uh, kind of help each other like with the final details and try to like hammering out like, you know, the finishing touches. But this is one where we kind of worked on together like almost from start to finish, so. Uh, we, in the last year we did a lot of work for um, an ad agency, Tribal DDB, doing illustrations for Manulife. Um, it was a big project. We did eight different illustrations a month. So it was a lot of work. We both had to be on it. 
Um, this is kind of an example of us working, to, like emulating one style to kind of get the work done faster. I came up with this initial style that they were happy with. Um, they're all just illustrations for like, you know, saving for retirement, um, invest in that sort of thing. Um, so I basically came up with this style and Andrew, you know, it's not a very difficult style, it's very simple. These are kind of small like blog uh, images, so it had to be simple. And then, you know, it was easy for Andrew to emulate as well. And we were able to, you know, there's a squirrel saving money and, uh, and just, you know, it was easy, like every month, you know, we had our eight illustrations and we had our style. Andrew could do it, I could do it. We just worked together, did four each, got it done quickly. So that's uh, another way we work together, just basically to get jobs done quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, so the next section, I guess, kind of topic is working for clients. Maybe this would be better called getting work from clients because that's kind of like a big side of it. I feel like a lot of people work very similarly. When they're working with clients, you know, you present your comps, you, uh, they pick one, you kind of hammer out the details, hopefully there's not too many uh, revisions, and then you send it in. So we wanted to talk a bit about how we get our clients and uh, how we've gotten our past clients and just, because uh, it's something that people seem interested in knowing. Um, so we were lucky, even from the get-go, we got a lot of work through just word of mouth and people seeing the work that we put out, but it's kind of a slow roll when we first got started. Um, there's obviously like direct things and indirect things you can do to get work. We always, I think historically with us, indirect things have always worked better for us, and when we do the direct things, it's because we're desperate and we don't have any work and we're like, you know, I need to get something to do this month or something to pay the bills. So some of the direct things we've done are all the usual stuff like uh, doing mail outs, like sending out postcards to companies we want to work for and art directors uh, who work at magazines we like or some stuff like that. Sometimes we send, you know, posters and emails. And one thing we do that actually works pretty well is uh, we have like a Christmas card list and we send everyone we work for Christmas cards that we silk screen ourselves and they seem to like that and we actually get more comments on that than anything else we've ever done and mailed out. Um, but then also I guess you could say like literally like your network of people and people you know and people who need design work done like we've always kind of been lucky and to be surrounded by a bunch of people who do their own kind of companies or they have bands or whatever. So they, they're just like always had a large group of people around us who need design work done on a regular kind of basis. So a lot of our work is straightly come from, you know, if we have a friend in a band and they have a new CD coming out and we don't have any work. And we're like, oh, hey, who's, you know, doing your CD artwork? So like, uh, it's good to have a network of people that know what you do. And, uh, and also it's good to have like a network of people who just need design work if that's the kind of work you want to do. Um, sometimes uh, the super targeted stuff, especially like stuff that's similar to cold calling, like like say if we're sending postcards or whatever to people who don't we don't have any connection with or who don't know us, it doesn't work as well because I don't know. It's just when it's cold calls, I think people don't like being told what's cool or that you should hire them. They want to kind of figure it out on their own. Um, it's like when some, everyone tells you you got to check out this band and you don't want to check out this band because mm -hmm. you don't want them to be able to told you, tell you later like, oh, I told you that band was so good. You know, you want to be like the one who discovers it and you want to be kind of like, so I feel like it's the same kind of thing when people hire work. They want to kind of like, I don't know, find, uh, find you. And so that's kind of why I think we've had a lot of luck with indirect things. And some of like the indirect things that I think lead to us getting work uh, is having like a diverse portfolio. We've always found whenever our portfolio is really skewed one way, it, that's the work you get. When we were doing a ton of posters, we were like only getting posters. And I don't know if it's because people who need logo designs or CD artwork or whatever don't think that you, you don't want to do the work because you're only, doing, you're only showing poster work or if they think you can't do it because it doesn't transfer over. But, if you want to do lots of different kinds of work, it's important to have lots of different kind of work in your portfolio. And I know that seems kind of obvious, but for whatever reason, it wasn't obvious to us. And we kind of had to make a conscious effort to spread things out and make people like, you know, have logos on our website and have just posters and books and everything that we wanted to do, we had to have it or else people wouldn't assume that we would do it. So that was one thing. Um, 
It was different back when we first started because social media is so big now and there's so many sites and stuff to show your work on and that's a huge advantage for anyone who's getting into it now um, just because there's so many more places to put your work and people to see it. So, I don't know, stuff like Dribbble, Facebook and all that is an amazing way to collect people who follow your work and show kind of like what you're doing and new ways you're doing it and just kind of like, I don't know, keep people up to date with what you're doing. Uh, so we use all that stuff. It's kind of a pain in the ass to keep on top of it because there's so many, Twitter, Dribbble, Facebook, your blog, your website. It's like overwhelming to keep on top of it. But honestly, like we found that we've got so much work through, you know, posting our stuff on all that because so many people see it. So I mean, as much trouble as it is updating six things every time you have something new, uh, it works, you know, and it's great that way. Uh, befriending like-minded individuals, having people who are your competition, but being friends with them is a huge plus because uh, you wouldn't think it would maybe initially, but like, I don't know, anytime we're too busy, we pass all our work on to our friends. So we have, we've been lucky to meet a lot of uh, people in our industry that are really cool and that, you know, we see at conventions and stuff like that. and. Uh, and they do the same thing for us. So it's, it's like, you know, make as many friends with designers as you can and like reach out to people on the internet and, and you know, just people whose work you like. And it, if, even if you like, you know, talk to them on there, it makes it easier when you see them in person just to kind of like talk and get a relationship going. And it's just like the best place to get work from because sometimes everyone's too busy and then that's when they pass the work along. So. That's kind of uh, another indirect thing. And then just, I guess the last kind of thing is just keep on working, putting your work out there. Like the more people, the longer you stick around, the longer you can do it and put work out, the longer, more likely people are to kind of see your work and just know you exist. And then, I don't know, I feel like just the sheer amount of years, we've been around for like eight years and it was every year it gets better and easier. So I don't know if that's true for all cases, but it seems true for us. So definitely just to keep at it. And you see a lot of it too with other people's careers where they like kind of like, you know, at a certain level, certain level, certain level, and they get to a point where they get a few big clients and they just blow up. So I think in anything, whether it's writing, painting, music, if you put the time in, it's gonna eventually pay off. Uh, sometimes it's hard because you don't have any money or you don't have any work, but it's kind of like if you can like survive through it and push past it, it, I don't know, I feel like it always gets better the more time you put in. I'm gonna get onto the, or you didn't do that. Yeah. All right, um, one thing we always get asked about is just uh, how we get to work with the bands that we get to work with and how uh, like the whole process of gig posters works basically. Like um, I think a lot of people assume that we just, you know, we like these bands, we see they're coming to Toronto and do a poster for them. Um, it kind of started that way in the beginning. We, um, you know, we were working for a promoter friend in Ottawa and he would just give us his uh, shows, like, sorry, the shows that he would promote, he would just get us to do posters for. We started screen printing them, but then, you know, we'd sell them, but then we kind of realized after we started uh, posting our stuff on gigposters.com and we started going to flat stock conventions <coughs> in the States, we realized that you kind of have to, um, um, you know, you have to kind of go through the band a bit more, like it's otherwise you're kind of doing a bootleg poster essentially. Um, so yeah, these are a couple of the bands that we've uh, been fortunate enough to work with. Um, these ones are just like the management contacted us directly and um, asked us to do you know, a poster for the Toronto show. Um, there's no real way to get these jobs. It's just like, like Andrew said, we've been doing it for a long time. We've been, um, uh, posting on this, this gigposters.com is like has been a great resource for us uh, to get jobs. Um, also, just going to the flat stock conventions, uh, meeting different artists, meeting band management, everything. So, um, working with the bands is pretty great. We there isn't a lot of creative like restrictions. Uh, we're basically we do whatever we want. We kind of just we come up with something do it as quickly as you can, send it to them, and have them approve it. We've been lucky we've never had anything rejected by a band, because it's only being used for one night, essentially. You know, maybe they'll sell them in their uh, store after if they don't sell at a night, but 
uh, you know, they're not too picky as long as they kind of like, they feel like they like the style and the, uh, you know, just the overall look and they think they can, you know, sell it and they like it, then that's good enough for them. Um, usually with jobs like this, we don't tend to get paid too much by the band for the actual design. It more works out and we split the run, say, like for Explosions in the Sky, they wanted 100 copies. And then uh, we, we had permission to print uh, around 50 or so and then sell them ourselves on our site and uh, when we go to flat sock, stuff like that. So that's basically how we make the money off those jobs. Once in a while, there's a design fee in there, but bands, even bigger bands that we've worked with, it's just like they don't, I don't know. It's uh, hard to get design fees, basically. So you make your money like reselling the posters uh, afterwards. Okay. Uh, so come to the last kind of section of our lecture, which is working for ourselves, which is um, something we've done a lot more in the past two, three years. And I think it's something that's really helped us. Um, uh, like I was saying earlier, like, I don't know what other experiences people have with doing their own company, but we had some really like lean times, like lean times where we were kind of questioning whether we would be able to keep doing the company just because you make a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time and you kind of like start to wonder like, is this ever gonna like kind of pay off? Or like, am I ever gonna be able to do this sustainably? Like, you know, I'm gonna have to make some life changes at some point. So uh, those typically were the times where we'd have to do, we would scramble to do some kind of like, you know, marketing stuff like sending mail outs and doing stuff like that. And then eventually we kind of replaced you know, those frantic self-marketing kind of moves with just doing our own work and putting in our store and trying to make money off of that. And uh, and so that's just kind of like why we want to talk about this, because it's been really good for us doing this uh, self-directed projects. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're going to just talk about a couple of the different kinds of self-directed work that we do. Um, we have an online store, and we, uh, you know, we thought it'd be a good way to set it up and sell our gig posters, but also make art prints and T-shirts, and just kind of have be making money in the background and not just, you know, from our client work. Uh, just so it's money that we just do, and we don't have to think about basically once we get an item up in the store. Um, these are just some art prints that, like, you know, we we drink a lot of beer, so we thought it'd be, you know, and everyone else, you know, people like beer generally, so we thought it'd be fun to just do a beer-related print. Um, just like anything that we kind of think would go over well and sell well. Uh, we also do t-shirts that uh, have gotten pretty popular over the last little while. Um, luckily we have friends that uh, print these for pretty cheap for us, so it works out really well. Um, so those are just some of the items that we sell in the store. Um, we've also been a part yes. of um, some gallery shows. You can go ahead. Um, just it's kind of like a new thing in the poster world, I guess. Um, you know, there's lots of different galleries, mostly in LA and in the States. And they're, uh, you know, they have the kind of themed poster shows where this one, uh, the one on the left was for a, a book themed art show and it was for uh, the book 1984. Um, basically we just had free reign to do whatever we wanted for that book. Uh, the other one to the right is for, a, it was a Zelda themed uh, art show in Portland. Um, Going back, this the bike one is for a, it was a bike theme show in Austin, Texas. And then the one on the right was for a La Carnita, the taco pop-up shop, now a real restaurant in Toronto, did an art show at the Brickworks. And that was just, it was Day of the Dead, Latin themed art show. So we just did whatever we wanted for that. These have worked out well for us as well. It's just, it's a good way to, when you're involved in these shows, your work gets seen alongside other artists and it gets uh, you know seen in different cities, like I mentioned, uh, LA, Portland, Austin. Um, so this is a good way to get your work out there and then they sell copies at the show. You get a cut and then you, get, you sell copies yourself after that. Um, and these are also just like, it's we have free creative reign to do whatever we want, basically. Uh, whatever we think would be cool. And then um, another thing that we've been doing more uh, self-directed work is uh, online series that have been kind of popular lately. Um, this was one we did for a website based out of LA called The Fox is Black. Um, it was basically, a, he did like a series of 
broken social scene themed um, wallpapers. Uh, this was one we did that you know we had it. Uh, we got picked for the You Forgotten People uh, album. We actually curated this, so we picked some other Toronto artists to uh, get involved as well. Um, these work out well because you know the broken social scenes management actually saw this and they liked it a lot and they uh, wanted to buy the rights to use on all their merch. So it was something that it didn't uh, sorry it didn't end up happening in the end because I guess the band wasn't into it, but. Um, you know, it got seen by the right people. It was something that we did for free and that, you know, we just did it for fun, for free, and it could have, uh, you know, worked out well in the end and, uh, you know, been an official Broken Social Scene merch item. Um, this is one we did for a website called Beast Every Week, and um, same thing. It was just like we had to draw a monster. I did kind of like a, a three-headed dog. I don't know. I just did it one night. thought it was fun. Um, an uh, ad agency in the UK saw it and wanted to use it for an uh, internal campaign they were doing. Um, so basically, we, they ended up buying it from us. So it was something that I spent a night on, had fun doing it, and then we actually turned around and made a, a decent little paycheck off it. So that worked out well. These series get seen by a lot of people. It's like, you know, it's blogs that, you know, have a big following and lots of uh, people going to them. So, you know, it gets seen by more people than just like when we post stuff on our portfolio. Um, this is another one we did recently for a new startup called Wander. That's, I don't think it's launched yet, but it's coming out soon. Um, same thing, we were given a Grateful Dead quote and uh, we just kind of went with it, did whatever we wanted. Did it like it was like an iPad um, wallpaper, iPhone and like a desktop wallpaper that you could download off the website as kind of promotion for the startup. And um, yeah, the fab.com, uh, that website is talking about doing like a postcard series and selling them online uh, using the design. So that's another thing that we did for free for fun and that, you know, it's been, it's going to be beneficial in the future. Uh, so just to kind of like uh, wrap up, because I feel like we're dragging on a little bit, but um, the, the, some of the benefits and why these kind of like self-directed products are important for us is like one of them, the main things is it kind of allows you to say no to bad work or work you don't want to do because um, when we can make our own shirt or poster and have it, you know, make a certain amount of money off of it, it uh, just, if someone comes to you with a project that is, you know, not necessarily your cup of tea or they seem like a nightmare client, it's kind of something you can be like, well, I could spend my time doing this and get paid, you know, less than what I would do when I could just do something fun for myself. So, like, sometimes, like, there's lots of times where we take on jobs that we would get paid less for from a client than doing our own art print or whatever, but it's just because that's usually clients we want to work for, it's people we want to have in our portfolio, or if we think doing that job will kind of expose us to new people, that's when we'll do it. Uh, but, like, like, just allowing, giving it you the confidence to say no to stuff you don't want to do when, you know, you could say you'd rather make money or do your own thing is kind of a huge plus for us. Uh, it's also... Um, just kind of a, a way to attract better work through doing what you want to do. Because if your portfolio is full of jobs that you made up for yourself and that are fun, then obviously people seeing those, and if they say, oh, I want to hire you to do something similar for me, then it's just kind of a way of like letting people know the work you want to do and uh, just attracting that better work rather than people who come to you and you know want you to do kind of a certain thing for them in a style they want. It's just, I don't know, I find it's like the quality of work that we've been getting since we've been doing more of our own stuff has been just way better. And I don't know if that has something to do with just being around a bit longer, but it just seems to really be a great way to attract interesting stuff that you want to do, not stuff you don't want to do. Um, then I guess just like being able to work without restrictions and satisfa satisfaction of making something, just whatever you want, and being able to you know make a living off of it is, you know, just such a big bonus at the end of the day that it's just, and that it's just really fun to do. Like your own kind of projects uh, is why we feel they're important, and it also kind of makes marketing yourself less. You feel less guilty about not mark doing your marketing or doing like reaching out to people when you probably should be. But it's just like because it's a way of reaching out to people. But it's a fun way of reaching out. It's not like cold calling or you know trying to track down addresses of art directors and stuff like that. It's just like it's I don't know. I feel like it's as uh, good and as uh, effective a way to get your work out there than kind of going through all those traditional channels 
which work, but I mean, I don't know. I just find that this way has worked so much better for us and it's been a much more enjoyable kind of like way to get the new work. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Thank you.